In 1984, Steve Jobs created Apple's most famous commercial of all time. This one 60 second ad completely revolutionized how companies advertise. Its impact was so big that big brands like Bud Light, Doritos, and even other tech companies like Samsung still use Apple's commercial techniques to this day. So what made this commercial so special? It didn't have any big actors, it didn't show the product Apple was trying to sell, and as a matter of fact, it wasn't even supposed to air at all in the first place. But despite all of that, Steve Jobs and his marketing team created a masterpiece. So how did they do it? To find out, we need to travel back to the 1980s. More specifically, the year 1980. The technology world back then was nothing compared to what it is now. Surprisingly, Apple was a tiny company and didn't have nearly as much business as its competitor. IBM. In 1980, IBM was essentially what Apple is to us today. They were a gigantic tech monopoly that controlled most of the computer world. Take a look at the sales difference. Apple's sales in 1980 were at 117 million dollars. Not bad at all, but considering IBM did 26.21 billion, it was clear that Apple had some catching up to do. But what IBM lacked was an innovative leader like Steve Jobs. Steve had a completely different view of how computers should be involved in our lives, as opposed to having computers just in the office. He envisioned everyone having a personal computer at home and having the freedom to do whatever they wanted on that computer. Up to this point, personal computers were more for tech nerds and not for the everyday person. But Steve wanted to change that, and so for years, he designed and developed a computer that could find a place in every home in America. He wanted it not only to be more powerful than IBM's, but more user-friendly and for the masses. And so four years later, in 1984, he finished the Macintosh, the first Mac computer in the world. The Macintosh was groundbreaking as it was the first personal computer to feature a graphical user interface, a built-in screen, and a built-in mouse. It truly was better than IBM's computers, but now Steve faced an even bigger roadblock than making the computer itself getting people to buy it. IBM was still the big dog in the computer world, and getting people to switch over to Apple was no easy task. Steve needed some help to do so. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where our next protagonist enters our story, Lee Cloud. Lee Cloud was the creative director of the commercial that put the Macintosh and Apple as a whole on the map. Lee Cloud met Steve Jobs when Steve was just 24 years old, and Lee saw how passionate Steve had been throughout his career. Also, Lee saw how revolutionary the Macintosh was, so he was more than willing to help Steve take down IBM and spring Apple into popularity. This dynamic duo wanted to create a commercial that was just as bold as the new computer, so they decided to make an ad like no other company had done before. They hired 300 extras and had Ridley Scott direct it, the same director of the world famous movie Blade Runner. With the $900,000 budget, which is roughly $2.3 million today, they created an ad that was essentially a movie. This commercial is jam packed with hidden messages, which I'll get into later, but in short, the ad takes place in a dark dystopian future. It starts with hundreds of henchmen marching in unison toward a big screen where we can see a dictator preaching about some type of new world order. We see the ad quickly cut back and forth between the dictator and a girl running with a sledgehammer while being chased by guards. After a little while, the girl reaches the room with the dictator preaching and proceeds to throw the sledgehammer at the screen, which causes it to explode. The ad wraps up with this text saying, on January 24th, Apple computer will introduce Macintosh, and you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. On the surface level, the ad seems pretty basic, but it's only after you see all the hidden messages that you realize how special this commercial really is. First of all, the ad is based on a book written by George Orwell called 1984. This is why the text at the end says that 1984 won't be like 1984. But anyway, in the book, George looks towards a future where the earth is controlled by a character called Big Brother. George paints a scene in the book in which people mindlessly obey the instructions given by Big Brother as they are brainwashed while staring at a screen. It doesn't take much guesswork to figure out that IBM is the big brother of the ad, aka the bad guy in society. With IBM having control of the computer world, Apple wanted to portray them as this dictator that used computers as tools for the government and big corporations. The girl in the ad is supposed to represent Apple, as she is the one that frees all the henchmen from IBM's reign of terror by breaking the screen. If you didn't notice, she's the only one wearing colorful clothing that stands out from everyone else. This represents how Apple thinks differently about computers. Rather than computers being tools for corporations, they think that computers should bring freedom to the people and power to the individual. She portrayed innovation and change, change in a fight against the mindless following of the man speaking on the screen, aka IBM. After the hammer destroys the screen, all the brainwashed viewers quite literally see the light. Apple breaks the bondage to IBM and offers a new solution 
the Macintosh. The idea was that Macintosh would revolutionize computing and that the future of technology would bring freedom rather than control. The commercial speaks to people intelligently by not saying too much. It doesn't try too hard to be amazing, but it's the truth. It took the truth that George Orwell shared decades earlier and applied it to the future. So now you can see why this ad was so great, but there was still another huge issue getting the most amount of people to see the ad. There obviously wasn't social media back then. Rather, there were only three major networks on TV. So, how did Steve Jobs and Lee Clow go about getting this commercial in front of everybody? Well, there's one event that happens every winter that has millions of Americans glued to their screens. The Super Bowl. Super Bowl 18 took place on January 22nd, 1984, just two days before the release of the Macintosh. The timing was perfect, and the dynamic duo knew that this was the right place to advertise their masterpiece. They bought two 60 second ad slots for their commercial, but there was a problem. No one at Apple liked the commercial. When the Apple board watched the commercial, they were struck silent. They were so unimpressed with it that they told Steve Jobs and Lee Cloud to sell the two minute block of advertising time Apple had bought for the Super Bowl. As a matter of fact, they wanted to fire Lee Cloud for how horrible the ad was. And Apple wasn't the only one that hated the commercial. Apple decided to test the effectiveness of the ad with focus groups. And on a 43 point scale for effectiveness, Steve Jobs and Lee Cloud's commercial scored a five. The commercial was destined to be one of the most least effective commercials that Apple had ever ran. But Steve and Lee knew they had something special on their hands. They decided to sell one of the 60 second slots, but lied about selling the other slot, claiming it was too late to sell it. So on January 22nd, 1984, after the third quarter of Super Bowl 18, the ad was shown to everyone. And everyone loved it. The ad blew the 96 million people who viewed it away as it was unlike anything they had ever seen before. The ad was a massive sensation and more people were talking about it than the actual game itself. It was so big that the evening after the game, all three of the major networks were airing news stories specifically just about the ad. Consumers flooded electronic stores across the country when the Macintosh debuted two days later. Those consumers would go on to purchase $155 million worth of Macintoshes in the three months after the Super Bowl. Case in point, Steve Jobs and Lee Cloud made the right decision not to sell the ad time. But what they didn't realize at the time was that they had just completely revolutionized how companies advertised during the Super Bowl. Up until Apple released their commercial, no one had ever done a cinematic movie-like production for a commercial ever. This commercial changed what advertising could be. Commercials could be as epic as a movie, and companies were free to create movements and cultural statements in their ads. Steve and Lee's commercial is often credited with setting the scene for the current era of Super Bowl advertising in which the ads are as important and popular as the game itself. And now, every company tries to replicate what Apple did in 1984 by saving all of their best commercials for the big game. They now know how important it is to deliver a hit during the game, all thanks to Apple taking a huge risk with their commercial. So yes, Apple took down the tech behemoth that was IBM and put their name on the map but they did way more than that. They completely revolutionized how advertisers make ads for the Super Bowl. 